So he started back square one, I'm going to make new model gliders, new free flight model gliders, and come up with a better design than the ones that I had back in the 1880s. And it really sort of invented him back into making manned gliding again. These gliders were similar to the ones in the 1880s, but differed because they had an extra wing, a tandem wing added for wing area. And he test flew them not only at the college in Santa Clara, but at Aptos near Santa Cruz on the coastline. They included a very large vein-like fin at the rear for that yaw instability problem he experienced in the 1880s. He didn't want to go through that again. And also, he wanted to experience equilibrium in flight, a physicist. He wants to see, if I could launch the glider nose down, would it pull out again and retain equilibrium? If I launched it upside down, would it retain equilibrium? If I launched it this way, would it maintain its equilibrium? If I can come up with a design and a center of gravity that always gets it to fly right again, I've solved that physics problem with equilibrium. This is his first model glider design. It was called the Pink Maiden, three and a half foot model. Very much like this one, but three and a half feet wide. You notice the tandem wings, one set behind the other. And if, I, if you can just take in your, in your mind and remove this wing, it looks very much like his first gliders. This long moment between the elevator and the first wing, and he's added a second wing for more lift. The picture on the left is of his mom, Ellen, holding that model. The model was unfortunately destroyed a little bit in the 1906 earthquake, so that's why it's damaged. A movie was made of his life in 1946 from Columbia Pictures called Gallant Journey, and that's the glider shown on the right, was part of the movie making. The movie also had pictures of Glenn Ford playing the role of Montgomery, making models at Santa Clara College with the Jesuit priest watching on, so this is the mock-up of what it was to have looked like at the time. He made another model called the Buzzard. It was a little larger, five-foot wingspan, with the tail, the, the fin, embedded within the last wing, in the trailing edge wing. This is the fictitious model of what it, what it must look like with the priest wondering why are they getting so much larger? These models are getting bigger and bigger. Not so happy. And then he also made also an, an unmanned model, unnamed model, sorry, a seven foot, much larger unnamed model with a smaller elevator type wing in the back. I want you to remember this shape because later on in the talk, it will come back again. Just keep this in your mind. From those model glider tests, he determined that the Pink Maiden, the first one, was the best design. And he decided to make a much larger kite of that design to test fly it and get control systems, thinking about wing warping. So he designed a whole wing warping system as a kite. This is the kite being flown with strings coming down to the ground. It was ballasted as a kite, flown also as a free flight glider from a railroad trestle down to a beach below. Here you can see that model glider, free flight glider, very large scale, landing on the beach with success with the gentleman saying, yes, we did it, and very, very happy. It actually worked. He then decided to make a bamboo mock-up of the control system. This is at Santa Clara College in 1905. That's Montgomery sitting in the control system with a sort of pedal system on the ground for your feet that would control the wing warping system of the glider. The aileron roll control was your feet. Also with the elevator control, just like the first one, first glider. But Montgomery had never flown so high. He had never been carried aloft in a balloon. He had never done trapeze work from high up. In fact, most people who did trapeze work didn't survive very long in that profession. If you did survive, you would get medals. So he found a gentleman by the name of Daniel Maloney who had a lot of medals, you can see here, uh, from his trapeze work. And he hired him to be his aeronaut. He trained him how to be a glider pilot. You're going to go up in this glider. I'm going to train you about the control system. He specifically made the controls not so much to begin with, and then over time would, make, would loosen the controls so that Daniel had more control over time, so he wouldn't do something crazy to start with. And with Daniel Maloney as a pilot, in March of 1905, they made a series of tests, March 16th through 20th, at Aptos, which is near Santa Cruz. Um, Montgomery made a full model of this, this glider he called the Montgomery Airplane. He test flew it at San Juan Batista near Hollister. And then together in March, they put Daniel Maloney in this. They got a hot air balloon, and they took it aloft thousands of feet with Daniel Maloney cutting the string and then gliding back down over a series of 10 to 15 minutes to a prescribed location and landing safely. They did four flights and complete success. And he, Montgomery decided not only is he successful, but it's time that the public actually witnessed the fact that he's successful. And it's the time for the public to see that heavier than air aircraft are actually possible because we've done it now. This is the, uh, the picture, the only picture we have of that glider on those tests in 1905 at that ranch 
near Aptos. So he, he convinced the fathers at Santa Clara College to make a public exhibition of this glider in April of 1905. They rededicated the glider, the Santa Clara. They christened it the Santa Clara at this event. And this was the first public demonstration of a heavier than air aircraft in the world. It predated Glenn Curtis's June bug flight in 1908, and it predated anything that the Wright brothers had done. John Montgomery didn't even know that the Wright brothers had flown their powered aircraft at this time. That news had not made it to California or to John. He knew nothing about it. News of Montgomery's activities, however, made it back to the Wright brothers. Montgomery was corresponding with Chanute in three letters, a lot of letters, a lot of correspondence. And the success of this public demonstration in April of 1905 was carried in the national media all across the Chicago Tribune, New York Times, it even made Europe news. People like Alexander Graham Bell, the Wright brothers, Octave Schnute, all learned about it and all wrote to Montgomery saying, what do you, how, how's it work? What, what's the secret of success? How do I learn from you? What are you doing? I'll show you some pictures of that flight. So here's the Santa Clara getting set up at Santa, Santa Clara College. That's John Montgomery setting it up. John standing proudly before it on the uh, two by fours, ready to get ready for the launch. That's Daniel Maloney. On the, on the seat, which is nothing more than a two by four between your legs. So you better make a pretty good landing. And this is a very, very great picture because the person on the second from the left here is Ellen Montgomery, John's mother. You remember, Ellen's the one who said that, you know, why are you messing around with all these gliders and stuff? Why? And John, John specifically invited his mom to come because he said it's, a, it's an opportunity not afforded to many mothers to see the first public flight of a heavier than air aircraft in, in America. And so Ellen finally came and said, I'm going to watch you do this and actually see it for real. There's the glider. Also, this picture is important because it shows how the wing could actually be warped so much. You can see that this wing over here is nearly flat with the ground, but this wing is drooping and has a lot of wash out. Sorry, wash in. So here's the glider being ready to, for the balloon. The balloon is being heated with hot air underneath it by a whole series of people holding on for, for dear life to keep, keep this balloon on the ground. The balloon gets to be very large, and you can see the tail of the glider right here. It's the most daring feat accomplished by man. It was advertised very widely in the Bay Area. And this is the glider going up with the balloon. The glider, Daniel Maloney, released at 4,000 feet, which was the same height as the mountains in the surrounding terrain, because they had no altimeter. He would just went up until he realized he was at the same height, cut the cord, and then was able to glide back down to a landing at a prescribed location that John Montgomery had told the public, this is where he's going to land. He landed on the crowd, rushed to come see that. That's the tail of the glider in the center of the picture. This is a replica of the Santa Clara. It's on display at the Hiller Museum in the Bay Area. There have been several replicas made. They made several other flights in the Bay Area from San Jose at the Agricultural Park. This is the Santa Clara in the trees in the background. He made another glider called the California that was being hoisted aloft for this demonstration. And this is Montgomery operating the winch that was carrying the balloon and the glider aloft. They made a series of flights all around the Bay Area in 1905, different racetracks for public exhibition. Some of them worked, some of them didn't work. Sometimes the release mechanism from the balloon wouldn't work at all, and so Daniel Maloney had to go down with the balloon in the glider to wait till it came down and landed, things of that nature. The paying public wasn't very happy when the glider actually didn't work. But then unfortunately on one flight in July of 1905, Daniel Maloney went up in the balloon uh, at the same time when the balloon was releasing off the ground, one of the cables from the balloon broke a cabane on the rear wing, the, the structure that holds the wing together. And Daniel Maloney either didn't see it or didn't care to notice. When he released from the glider, that rear wing folded, and it caused him to come down to the earth at such a speed that it, he, he died from the impact. And that's the first fatality in aviation history in America, unfortunately, 1905 in the Bay Area. After that, Montgomery made another design, which was a stronger design out of different kinds of woods and materials, trained another pilot named Robert DeFalco to fly in that glider, and made several demonstrations in Sacramento. If you're familiar with the Bay Area, just to know, Oakland, Santa Clara University is down here, San Jose, this is where the flights were happening. Santa Cruz and the Aptos were down on the map, and Sacramento's up to the upper corner. This is that launch of that fateful flight in July where Daniel Maloney was unfortunately killed and that's his last ascension with a balloon. But these flights were recognized again nationwide as being a success. The controlled human flight was possible. And it was, he published in Scientific American, he published these in different scientific journals, and it brought worldwide attention to the success of Montgomery. 
But it also, following the death of Maloney, in the Bay Area at least, these devices were considered then to be man killers. How could we keep doing these heavier than aircraft when people can die in them? Why would we even do that when we've got lighter than aircraft that don't kill people? Montgomery is just a man killer. And so the negative press, despite the success, was almost just as overwhelming.